What do the Clippers need to add? Well, I think more than anything, they need to add a seriousness about their approach in the regular season. And and they talked a lot about it after the game. Um, and I thought it was a little bit of a cop-out, to be honest with you, when they were talking about, oh, we just weren't together. It's year one. The Denver Nuggets had more time together. They know each other. I'm, and I'm saying to myself, wait a second, you're up 3-1. You've got the deepest rotation in the NBA. You're up 3-1, and you're up double digits in two of the three closeout games, and you don't get it done. That's not a matter of – not being together long enough because you were in a position <laughs> to win. It's a matter of, um, number one, I think just a, just a focus and a commitment that you can't just show up with more talent than another team. You've got to go out there, roll your sleeves up, get nuts and bolts with them, and get it done when you have to do it. And also, I think the lack of adjustments to figuring out a way to, to do something against that two-man game in the middle of the floor, different than what they were doing, because they either – allowed Jamal Murray to have a lot of room coming off the screen, or they trapped him, and then they hit Jokic in the middle, and then he just completely picked you apart. Those were the two options for the Clippers. So, you know, we talk about the star power. We talk about the coaching, a coach that's won a championship in this league. To me, they were too reliant on having those things on their side, and they didn't actually get down to the nuts and bolts of coming up with a blueprint and making the adjustments and having that edge and that toughness to go out there and actually execute. I just felt like there was a sense of entitlement that they had because they had the talent, they had the coaching pedigree, they had these things on their side. And Denver Nuggets just were a team that about middle of game five started to realize we can do what we want against this team. This is not the defensive juggernaut that everybody expected the league to be. And if we can operate with our two best players in a comfort zone, we've got a great chance to get back in this series. And certainly eventually it got to, to believing that they were actually going to win the series. Tim, how much of this falls squarely on Doc? Uh, we, if this were other coaches that had this type of talent, as you mentioned, and all of a sudden they were bounced when they were heavily favored to see the Lakers in the Western Conference Final, we would be absolutely killing them this morning. Yeah, Keyshawn, he has to, he has to own it. And he's going to say the right things, but uh, you wonder, like, does he actually believe it? that he had a, had a hand in this. He's got to own some of this, man, because you go back even to the Clippers teams when he had all of that talent, right, with Chris Paul and Blake and DeAndre Jordan and J.J. Redick and Jamal Crawford, and he had that group. Now, I know they had some injuries at inopportune times with those teams, but still, those are some of the most talented teams in the NBA as well, and they, they would come up small in the biggest moments. So he has to own some of this. And, and again, I, I don't know – what their approach was during the course of regular season. And obviously, even up to the point we shut it down, I was still talking about the Clippers every night. I felt like saying, when are they going to dial it up defensively to look like that team that we thought they would be when you put Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Patrick Beverly on the court at the same time? I kept saying it all the way up until middle of March. And then you have the the pandemic comes and you have a long layoff, and then they come back. And now I know they added Reggie Jackson to Marcus Morris right before the league shut down. So you're going, okay, they got a couple new parts they got to incorporate. And that is, that is something, but it's not, come on, man, the rotational role players. It's not your star guys. Bottom line for me was I still never saw the identity that you wanted to see, which was a suffocating team on the perimeter defensively with that personnel. And they just never got there. And for me, that's game plan. That is a purpose in the things you're talking about, accountability in the film room, accountability in the walkthrough, tightening things up from game to game, just didn't see it. I just felt like they came off to me like they were relying on the fact they had more talent than the people they were playing against. And you just can't do it. When you get a team in this league with a guy that gets as hot as Jamal Murray got in that bubble, and you have a guy in Jokic that you can run your offense through that can pick you apart with his passing, you have to tighten those things up from game to game. Did not see it out of the Clippers. And then, look, beginning of the fourth quarter last night, there's, there's no other way to describe that other than just shrinking under the light. There's no other way to describe what you watched at the beginning of the fourth quarter with some of the looks they got. For star players, those are great shots. And for them to go 0 for 9 at the beginning of the fourth quarter while this thing was getting away from them, um, they absolutely wilted. There's no other way to describe it. And all of those guys now to take that to the offseason, and that's the all they want to about, oh, we didn't have that much of an opportunity to play together, and it's year one. And there's no year one when you put together a team like that. There's championship every year. 
That's what you're going for when you put those guys together. So, um, and, and they're going to deflect and deflect and deflect. I think this has to fall at the feet of a lot of people. But, yeah, Doc Rivers has to take a major responsibility in this for not being able to figure out a way to slow them down at a critical time in this series and a critical time in the game. And to blow double digit lead two different times when you have a chance to move on to the conference finals, yes, they're, they're going to have a long offseason thinking about this. Yeah, pressure tends to burst pipes every now and then. And speaking of pressure, the Nuggets rallied from 3-1 in every series that they played, and yet and still they got it done. How much gas will be left in the tank, Tim, when they face the Lakers? That's a great question, Key, because I saw them in game one of this series, and I thought, man, I knew that was coming that night. Like I predicted that was going to be a 20-point game because of what they had just done with Utah. Clippers are sitting there waiting on them. And sure enough, they looked like they were completely gassed. Now, to their credit, Mike Malone has a group that he is clearly super connected with. That team's got great chemistry. They care about each other. They came back after game one, and they were determined that they were going to—they were not going out of this thing without a fight, and they felt like they could operate certain spaces offensively that they were going to be able to get this done. And, and I thought the Clippers became a little bit predictable offensively, and I think Mike Malone saw that and knew, if I can just keep the spirits up, we're going to be okay. So I think you've got the same situation here. Look, the Lakers are sitting there waiting on them, they're going to get a crack at them, and they've got – look, they've got more length. They've got a little bit more, I think, tenacity defensively. I think the Lakers at times have been the best offensive team I've seen in the bubble when they have turned it up. So that's what Jamal Murray and Jokic have right now. They've got a face. And, look, they might fall behind, dig themselves a hole early in the series. But I think at this point they deserve our respect to say no matter how this series starts, this is not going to be something that's going to come easy for the Lakers. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.